For the second year in a row, winter conditions led to an unplanned holiday during the month of February. Coming up, we'll have the details on this year's Polar Plunge. Just over a week ago, the Texas Tech campus was getting ready for one of the biggest sporting events of the year. MCTV's Patricia Perry headed to Urbanoski Park before the big game to find out what life was like in a temporary village called Raiderville. And basketball may have stolen the headlines last week, but the world is now watching as the 33rd Winter Olympic Games are underway in China. MCTV's Nathan Bowles will be in with the latest highlights from Beijing. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Parker Ganey. And I'm Jaden Santos. Classes are back in session again today after a winter storm led to the closing of the Texas Tech campus late last week. That's right, Jaden. For the second year in a row, snow, ice, and sub-freezing temperatures gave students an extended holiday during the month of February. The wintry conditions started with a drop in temperatures on Wednesday, and by that afternoon, sleet and snow began to move across the area. Shortly before 5 p.m., Texas Tech officials sent out a notice through TechAlert that all of evening classes were canceled. And later that night, the university canceled all classes for Thursday as well. Snow continued to fall through Thursday with the Lubbock Airport officially reporting 1.3 inches on Thursday night. But the real concern for most of the area was the bitter cold temperatures. On Thursday morning, sub-freezing temperatures coupled with breezy conditions led to wind chill values as low as negative 9 degrees here in the Lubbock area. But some portions of the South Plains woke up to temperatures that felt like negative 15 degrees. The winter weather rem reminded many people of last February's week-long event when a polar vortex resulted in several days of below freezing temperatures for most of the state of Texas. That storm also dropped several inches of snow in the Lubbock area and sub-zero temperatures led to the campus staying closed for a full week. Today not only marks the return to campus after an unexpected holiday, but it is also the first day some students may be attending class in person since the spring semester began. As of today, any class that was using a hybrid or fully online modality due to COVID concerns is required to start meeting fully in person. The change comes as the spring 2022 semester enters its fifth week. Up until now, university officials had allowed instructors to change to a hybrid or online modality if COVID-19 infections were keeping students or instructors from attending class. But now most regularly scheduled courses will take place in the classroom. The decision to allow for a change in modality was announced in early January. At that time, the Omicron variant was leading to record reports of COVID-19 across the United States. The university's concerns seem to have been warranted as the Texas Tech campus has reported an average of 460 cases per week since the residence halls opened during the second week of January. Last week's numbers were skewed by the winter storm, but even the last official report on Wednesday, 30 new active cases of the coronavirus were listed, with 71 total cases still active by midweek overall. As of Wednesday evening, 1,699 cases of COVID-19 had been reported since faculty and staff reported to campus at the beginning of January. If you have been exposed to COVID-19 or are showing symptoms of the virus, the university is continuing to offer a free on-campus testing site through spring break. The testing site is located at, Sam's, at the Sam's Poolside location next to the Rec Center's Leisure Pool. Testing is available Monday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. The site uses PCR testing, which means results are typically available within one to two days. For more information on testing, as well as options to get a COVID-19 vaccine here on campus, visit emergency.ttu.edu slash coronavirus. COVID-19 has not been the only concern for students after the return from winter break. On-campus crime has also continued to be an issue during the second half of the school year. Since the beginning of January, there have been five reported cases of sexual assault at Texas Tech. All five incidents have occurred in an on-campus residence hall. In four of the five reports, the suspect has been a Texas Tech student. Currently, it is unknown if those four incidents are related, but the fifth suspect was not a student, and his identity is still unknown. The suspect is described as a 5-foot, five 5-inch, five heavy-set, white male in his late 20s. He is balding with facial hair and browned eyes. If you have any information regarding this suspect or any other incident, you are asked to contact the Texas Tech Police Department by calling 806-742-3931. Last week's winter storm brought almost all activity on the Tech campus to a halt. 
Even before then, most events and activities have been postponed until after today to help lower the spread of COVID-19. But one group kept a previously scheduled event on the calendar to give students the chance to explore some job options for this summer. Last Wednesday, the University Career Center hosted a summer camp job fair in the sub ballroom. Students looking for summer employment had the opportunity to stop by which and visit with representatives from camps from around the country. Last week's fair was one of the several hosted by the UCC throughout the semester to help students who are looking for jobs during and after their time here at Texas Tech. Donna Strader, Assistant Director at the Career Center, says that working at a summer camp is a great option to help students prepare for their future careers. As a counselor, uh, they get a lot of responsibility and a lot of uh, good experience that can go on a resume, or they can talk about it in a job interview. If you weren't able to stop by last week's summer camp job fair, the University Career Center has several more events to open the campus community coming up between now and May. For more information and a listing of all this semester's events, visit careercenter.ttu.edu. As we've mentioned, weather was the big story here on the Tech campus last week. But over the weekend, the South Plains saw a return to more normal February conditions. That's true, Jaden. Highs on Saturday and Sunday climbed above 50 degrees, even though overnight lows have still stayed under the freezing mark. But could we see more sub-freezing daytime temperatures anytime soon? Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. The MCTV tower cam is showing bright, sunny skies this afternoon. The return of the sun has been a welcome change here on campus, and it's also helped temperatures climb back above the 50 degree mark. Today's highs should reach the mid-50s, and the clear skies will stick around through late afternoon into the evening. Overnight, we'll see another drop below freezing, but it should still be nowhere near the single-digit lows we experienced last week. Tomorrow, temperatures could climb as high as the mid-60s, but breezy conditions are back in the forecast. Winds will range from 15 to 25 miles per hour, and that will keep it feeling pretty chilly until the afternoon. Tomorrow's rise in temperatures will continue into Wednesday, but Thursday will bring another slight cool off back into the 50s. Looking ahead, temperatures are forecast to stay mild into the weekend, and there's no chance for any pre precipitation between now and next week. Last week's weather may have changed a lot of people's plans from Wednesday through the weekend, but luckily the cold snap hit just late enough that it didn't have an effect on one of the biggest sporting events of the year. Last Tuesday, the Texas Tech men's basketball team took on the Texas Longhorns in the first showdown since former head coach Chris Beard led for Austin. The atmosphere at the game had been described as one of the best ever at the United Supermarkets Arena. But the build-up to that moment started days before. MCTV's Patricia Perry headed out to the west side of Urbanowski Park last week to get an up-close look at how students prepared for the game of the year. On your way to class early last week, you may have seen a large amount of tents. They were filled with hundreds of students camping out awaiting the big game of the season. The Longhorns were coming to town and many students didn't want to miss that big win. It's competitive to get a seat anyways, um, so I want good seats for this game because it's going to be really good. I mean, we got uh, <laughs> I mean, so like, Chris really Beard's going to be here. here. Exactly. <laughs> I want to see, you know, how this game plays out. Not only were these students pumped up and ready for the game, they were also enjoying the school spirit and dedication these campers showed. They were hoping to connect with fellow peers and make new friends. Yeah. The atmosphere, the atmosphere the is going to be so electric. It's just going to be something like we haven't seen, especially in the past couple years they've been here and I personally haven't seen it either recently. Meeting like all the more people like I just met these guys like 30 minutes ago and I mean now we're look at us now and now we're doing an interview together so I mean it's just great getting to know people that have the common goal. As you can see by the excitement all around the United Supermarkets Arena the Texas Tech versus Texas game is approaching quick. Students have been out here camping for days waiting for this game hoping to score a win. Wow. <laughs> For some students, the game was to show that no matter what, they would always support Coach Mark Adams and the team. It's more about supporting Coach Adams and the new team and let them know that we got their back all the way through it. This was an unforgettable game for Texas Tech basketball. These students were able to create memories that will last them a lifetime. For MCTV, I'm Patricia Perry. Raiderville may have closed down last Tuesday. But the Red Raider basketball team season is far from over. MCTV's Nathan Bowles joins us live in studio with highlights from the men's most recent game, along with a look at weekend highlights from the 2022 Winter Olympics. Nathan? 
Thanks, Parker and Jaden. Mark Adams was relieved to get a win over the Longhorns on Tuesday in the raucous environment at the United Supermarkets Arena. On Saturday, it was time to go to Morgantown to play the West Virginia Mountaineers. Pick it up early in the first half. Sean McNeil gets it, gets fouled, but still makes it three and converts the end. One West Virginia up 11 to two early. Midway through the first half, Polly Polycap slams it down, giving West Virginia a 13 to six lead. The Tech started to cut into that. Malik Wilson to Bryson Williams sinks a three. He led Tech with 15 points on the night, but 520 left in the first half. West Virginia up one. Jalen Bridges makes a three. He led West Virginia with 16. They carried his six-point lead into the half. Terrence Shannon took a nasty fall, not pictured here, but he actually came back to the surprise of head coach Mark Adams, and Shannon immediately made an impact. Up two in the second half with 11.46. Gives it to Davion Warren, who sinks a triple, and then Shannon decides to get it done himself. Gets it, pulls up from the free throw line, makes a mid-range jumper. Tech up eight. Nine points help propel that second half comeback. Daniel Bacho gets the block there. And then with a minute and a half left, Kevin McCuller with the rebound. Gives it to Daniel Bacho. It's Bacho time. He slams it home. Puts the exclamation point on a 60-53 to win for Texas Tech. Tech held West Virginia to 4 for 32 from the field in the second half. After the game, Williams talked about the adjustments Tech made in the second half. The uh, main thing we adjusted to is we knew that the rest, were, that we figured out the rest was going to let us play. I mean, they, was, uh, they weren't really blowing their whistles like that. And, I mean, we, we had, in the first half, I felt like we were driving in, looking for those foul calls and things like that. We weren't getting them. So, second half, we just talked about, I mean, we got to drive in there, not expecting no calls, just going in there to finish, and uh, whatever happens, happens. Tex Adonis Arms also took a nasty fall during the game. Today, Adams said that Arms and Shannon would both be game-time decisions. For Oklahoma, the Red Raiders are ninth in the new AP poll after the wins over Texas and West Virginia last week. It's the highest ranking they've had this season. They will defend that ranking as they go on the road to play Oklahoma on Wednesday. First tip is at 8 p.m. and televised on ESPNU. Also on Saturday, the Lady Raiders look to get their third Big 12 win against number 25 Kansas State, a team they beat earlier this year. Pick it up early, Kansas State also got out to a big lead against Texas Tech. This time the three from Jalen Glenn to give him a 12-2 lead. And then 3:44 in the first quarter, Serena Sundell with a three. Kansas State up 20-12, but 6:25 in the second quarter, Tech cutting into the lead. And Shantae Embry all alone, she pulls up. She gets a three, Tech up 26-24. Goes back and forth, 3:44 in the second quarter. Here's Ioka Lee, 24.7 points per game. She's averaging that's third in the country. Makes a layup early in the second half to Kansas State, an eight-point lead. Vivian Gray was also scoring at will. She pulls up with a mid-range jumper to cut the K-State lead to 10. She finished with 36 points on the night. But every time Tech threw a punch, Kansas State threw one harder. Lee with the turnaround jumper to put Kansas State up six late in the third. Six minutes left in the fourth. Briamber Scott with the three. She cuts the K-State lead to four, but again, it just felt like Kansas State always had an answer. Uh, a little over 2.30 in the, left in the game. Laura Mackey, her only shot of the game, but she makes it, and Kansas State carries it to an 82-75 win. Tech head coach Chris DeGerlich talked about playing Ioka Lee and how her team responded despite the loss. Um, obviously, um, Lee is a, is a big problem, right? She's, she's having a great year. Um, every year that I've watched her play, I think she's gotten better and better, and um, it's really difficult if she catches the basketball. You know, you got to keep her from catching the basketball, and um, we didn't do that tonight, and so she had a big night. Um, but I thought that our kids really responded. I thought Vivian Gray was an All-American tonight um, in every sense of the word, um, and I thought that we had a lot of kids just battle through. Tech will be back home at the United Supermarkets Arena against the only other Big 12 team they have beaten. Tech took down number 13 Texas in January, and they hope to find the magic again Wednesday at 7 p.m. The game will also be on Big 12 Now on ESPN+. There are human rights concerns all over China that cause diplomatic boycotts of the Winter Olympics from many countries, including the United States. But the athletes are still in Beijing, and the Winter Olympics rage on. On what was Sunday in Central Time, two-time Olympic gold medal skier Michaela Schifrin skied out of the giant slalom for the first time in any competition since 2018. 
It's a big setback for Schifrin at these games. The American was a defending gold medalist in the giant slalom, but she will likely compete in the slalom event on Wednesday. Later, American Nina O'Brien suffered a horrific crash on the giant slalom, where she appeared to badly injure her left leg. The crowd was in an eerie silence as O'Brien had to be taken off on a stretcher. However, U.S. Ski and Snowboard said she was alert and responsive. USA Today reported the organization said she asked if she was delaying the race and how fast she was going. In happier news, Karen Chen's free skate helped the United States clinch a silver medal in the figure skating team event. They finished behind the Russian Olympic Committee and 15-year-old Camila Valieva. In her short program, Valieva became the first woman to land a quadruple jump at the Olympics. The United States silver medal finish is her highest finish ever in the figure skating team event. The United States is still searching for their first gold medal of these games. The Russian Olympic Committee has the most total medals with seven, but is Sweden at the top of the medal count as the only country with three gold medals. The games will run through February 20th. That's all for sports. Back to you, Parker and Jaden. Thanks, Nathan. So, Jaden, did you make it out to last week's showdown against Texas? You know, I, I did. I did get a ticket, but I heard they sold out in eight minutes. So, I did end up giving my ticket away, but I was watching the game, um, and it was an amazing experience. Um, did awesome. you make it out to the game? You know, I, I really tried. Uh, I tried to get tickets online, and my phone crashed. So, uh, ended up watching it at my house. There you go. Better than nothing. Well, that's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thanks so much for joining us and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday.